Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to another video. Today we'll be covering the spice metric for image captioning. So, the first question is obviously, what are some issues with other automatic metrics used for image captioning? Why do we need this new metric called spice? Well, other metrics such as blue, meteor cider, or rauge, they're all sensitive to n-gram overlap. And n-gram overlap is neither necessary nor sufficient for two sentences to convey the same meaning. So to illustrate the limitations of n-gram comparisons, consider the following caption from the MS Coco dataset. The first caption says a young girl standing on top of a tennis court. And the second caption says a giraffe standing on top of a green field. These two captions have five words that overlap. However, they convey completely different messages, and thus these two captions should not be considered similar. However, using these n-gram techniques, these two captions are actually considered very similar. So, the main idea behind SPICE. SPICE suggests that the semantic propositional content is an important component of caption evaluation. So, for example, given an image with the caption, a young girl standing on top of a tennis court, we expect that a human evaluator will consider the following to score the caption. There is a girl, the girl is young, the girl is standing, there is a court, court is tennis, the girl is on top of court, right? As human evaluators, we'll probably have these in mind so when we're looking at the given image and the caption, we'll be like, hey, does the caption have these criteria met, right? So this is what the SPICE metric is trying to model. Now, they basically do this by the construction of something called a scene graph. So they estimate caption quality by transforming both the candidate and reference captions into a graph-based semantic representation called a scene graph. And the scene graph encodes the objects, attributes, and relationships found in image captions while abstracting away all the syntactic sugars of natural language. So, uh, for example, they provided this graph here to show us what it looks like. So we have a girl here. This is um, a noun and it's the subject, right? And it's connected to all these other grammar stuff, right? Okay. Now let's go into details of how we can construct the actual scene graph and how they actually constructed the scene graph. So initial step, the captions are initially parsed using a dependency parser to establish syntactic dependencies between words. So what is dependency parsing? Parsing in natural language processing is like analyzing a sentence to understand its structure. It's similar to how you might break down a sentence to understand its grammar in school, right? So dependency parsing identifies relationships like which word is the main subject, which is an action or other words, verb, and how other words modify or relate to these words, right? So that's what we're doing here. Uh, so like here's an example. If we input a caption, a young girl standing on top of a tennis court, we could assign a part of speech to each token. So uh, it's a determiner, uh, young is adjective, girl is the noun, and also the subject, standing is a verb, and right, all these grammar stuff. So we establish dependencies using a dependency tree here. Okay, and this is, you, you can see everything that's going on in this diagram here. So, after that, we perform some post-processing steps. So first, we simplify the quantificational modifiers. So the purpose, this step involves simplifying modifiers that quantify objects in the caption. And quantificational modifiers include words or phrases that indicate amounts, like several, many, or specific numbers, like three, right? So how it works, the parser identifies these quantifiers and simplifies them to make the structure more straightforward. For example, if we have three dogs, it will be simplified to the object 
dog with an attribute indicating the quantity three. So instead of representing three dogs as three separate nodes in the scene graph, it will be represented as a single node dog with an attribute indicating the quantity three. And we also have resolving pronouns. So pronouns like he, she, it, or they are used in place of nouns. This step aims to resolve these pronouns to um, the nouns they refer to. So how it works, the system determines what each pronoun refers to in the context of the caption. For example, if a caption says, it is running, and it refers to a previously mentioned dog, the parser will link it to dog. And we'll see all of these steps in more detail. And we have handling plural nouns. So the purpose of this step is to deal with plural nouns, ensuring that the scene graph correctly represents multiple instances of an object. So how it works, instead of creating multiple nodes for each instance of a plural noun, Spice treats plural nouns differently. It avoids duplicating nodes and instead represents pluralities as attributes. For instance, dogs will be represented as a single node dog with an attribute indicating plurality. Okay. Now, the next step is representation of semantic relations as tuples. So they represent scene graphs as tuples. The semantic relations in the scene graph are viewed as logical propositions or tuples. Um, this way, right, because the machine cannot actually visualize this graph we have here. They represent this entire graph with tuples. So how did they form this tuple, right? Uh, they provide a function t, and that is defined as a function that returns these tuples from a scene graph. So t, g of c, where g of c represents the scene graph of the caption. And the tuple contain elements representing objects uh, o of C, attributes K of C, and relations E of C. So for the scene graph in the example figure, the tuples might be girl, court, girl young, girl standing, court tennis, girl on top of, court, right? So we can see all these connections, girl and young, girl and standing, uh, girl and court, right? Um, all these stuff, right? Okay. And we basically match tuples between scene graphs to see how similar they are, right? And this is using the binary matching operator. A binary matching operator, this is the symbol, is used to identify uh, the matching tuples between two scene graphs, um, the candidate caption and the reference scene graph, right? So the reference scene graph is basically the ground truth, right? This is what we're trying to reach. And the candidate caption is the scene graph generated from uh, the caption from like a machine learning model, for example, right? image captioning model. Okay, so we could calculate the precision, recall, and spice score. So the precision is the ratio of the number of matching tuples between the candidate and reference scene graphs to the total number of tuples in the candidate scene graph, right? So we have T, G of C, and then we're trying to find where they overlap, T of G of S, and then divided by T of G of C, right? This formula here. And we also have recall, which is defined as the ratio of the number of matching tuples between the candidate and referencing graphs to the total number of tuples in the referencing graph. So basically precision, but uh, the ratio is to referencing graphs instead of candidate scene graphs. Okay. And finally, the spice score, which is really the F1 score. And that is the harmonic mean of precision and recall, right? Um, spice score is the F1 score. So we apply this formula and P and R, we already know how to solve for those up there. So this one is pretty free, okay? And this is how you calculate the spice score if you have two, uh, two captions, right? So what are the matching criteria, right? How can we determine that two tuples actually match? 
uh, they use something called WordNet synonym matching. So for matching tuples, the SPICE metric employs a WordNet synonym matching uh, ab approach similar to the Meteor metric. So tuples are considered a match if their lemmatized word forms are equal or if they are found in the same WordNet syn set. So lemmatized basically means that, uh, for example, the word running or ran, they're all simplified to the root or most basic form run, right? Basically simplifying all these words to their root form. And what is the WordNet, right? The WordNet is a large lexical database of English where nouns, verbs, adjectives, and adverbs are grouped into sets of cognitive synonyms, or also known as synsets, each expressing a distinct concept. Synsets are interlinked by means of conceptual, semantic, and lexical relations. A synset is a set of synonyms that share a common meaning. For example, uh, the words ship, boat, and vessel might be in the same synset because they all refer to a medium-sized um, watercraft, right? Okay. And another important thing to acknowledge is that there is no partial credit for incorrect tuples. So unlike other metrics, SPICE does not give partial credit for tuples where only one element is incorrect, right? Um, this is because many common relations and image captions like in or on do not deserve credit if they are applied incorrectly, right? They could um, change the caption by a wide margin. And now let's talk about interpretability and acclipability. Ah, oh, that was a mouthful. Okay, so the SPICE score is simple to understand and interpret as it naturally ranges between zero and one. So, you know, one obviously means that uh, two captions are more similar, so therefore your candidate caption has a pretty high score if you score one, right? And it does not rely on cross data set statistics, making it applicable to both small and large data sets. So overall, uh, SPICE is a pretty good metric, but for image captioning uh, evaluation, you will typically use SPICE, Blue, Meteor, all of those at the same time just to see what you get, right? It's not like you have to choose one out of all of them. And nowadays, they're actually uh, trying to expand uh, automatic uh, metrics to evaluate large vision language models as well. But they use slightly different approaches, although they still use SPICE score, uh, Meteor Blue, right? So it's still important to understand how they work. And yeah. That's it for this video. If you have any questions or suggestions or comments, um, just leave them down in the comment section below and I will try to respond as soon as possible. All right, thank you guys for watching and see you next time.